I acquired with uh, my investment company, the Thermo Companies out of Denver, a roughly 80% interest in Global Star in a transaction that closed in 2004. Global Star was in bankruptcy at that time, uh, and, uh, and my partners and I became interested in the business and acquired it in a rather complex transaction that concluded after FCC approval of the license uh, uh, modifications, or the license transfer, rather, um, in, uh, in 2004. Well, the early stages of my career were not in satellite. Um, they were in developing independent energy facilities, uh, predominantly in Colorado, and the things uh, that were necessary for that were persistence, um, and the ability to rally troops around a common cause, which was to build power plants and export energy. We, we moved from that business into uh, oil and gas in order to provide gas for the power plants and then into a series of other things, including um, telecom uh, aggressively into the fiber business, but then also into Global Star. Well, Global Star is a company that, if anybody knows anything about Global Star, they know that what it takes is perseverance. Um, and it's beyond perseverance at my end and my partner's end. It has to do with the perseverance of the entire company and all of the people there. Uh, it's been a very challenging road, uh, but we've gotten through it and the company is thriving uh, now. But during the middle of that process, we had satellites um, which failed to operate correctly uh, and needed to be replaced. Uh, then we had multi-year delays in getting the new constellation up there. We had a little thing called the financial crisis in the middle of the whole deal, and that financial crisis led us to creatively get a guarantee um, from the French government in order to borrow funds from a group of French banks. Uh, so I think when you look at what's happened to Global Star over those years, um, that perseverance would be probably the byword of our existence. I think in, in, in my career, including uh, Global Star, we like to analogize um, what we do to Sisyphus, um, who rolls the rock up the hill and then the rock rolls down on his head to the bottom of the hill. Um, Sisyphus is condemned in mythology to do that perpetually. Um, we, however, push the rock up the hill and periodically get it to go over on the other side. Um, and so it comes back to this issue, I think, of persistence that we talked about a moment ago. Uh, and and that, that really is the lesson. Um, many, many times in everyone's career, you cannot uh, solve a problem by just thinking about it. Uh, you have to do, and you have to work, and you have to drive, uh, and you have to have good luck along the way. Uh, and so we think about it from that perspective. And every day, you go to the office, and it's another day, and you start the process over again, and eventually, um, you'll get to the place that you need to get. And never, never give up. Almost across the board, what I look for is uh, youth and intelligence. Um, my assumption is that with those two, you get high energy and you get creativity. Uh, I believe that in the satellite industry in particular, because it's such a long cycle industry, uh, that youth is not favored in the same way that it is in certain other industries. And it's a failing. Um, but going forward, we all now understand that there are more and more interesting technologies developing in space. And those things are happening by younger people, um, and looking at things in a different fashion than uh, that we have historically looked at them. And that's huge. And so when, when I think about that from the perspective of Global Star, if you looked at our organization, um, we have very, very young, very smart people. Um, and and I, I think that just proves out over time. Um, I would say it's no longer your father's satellite company. Um, the whole industry has changed. Um, we're building small sats. Um, we're linking them up in different ways. Uh, the services that they're providing are incredibly creative and different than they were a while ago. 
And so it's very, very technology-based, uh, not in the same fashion that it was historically, but in avant-garde ways to think about it. Um, and importantly, everything that's coming down out of a satellite now fits into a data pipe. Uh, and that data pipe can be mined in a big data fashion uh, to create additional uses for the product that were not evident. A few years ago, people wanted to make sure that they had broadband that was rural. They wanted to make certain that they could get TV shows uh, downlinked um, to a cable provider. But now we're doing things in space that are fundamentally more exciting than they were before. So, if I was a young kid and I was getting involved in space today, uh, it would be a no-brainer um, because you've got all of the sex and sizzle associated with throwing something up in space and yet uh, radically changing technologies, which is what younger people uh, and I want to experience, rapid change, rapid advancement. <laughs>It was only a few years ago uh, that uh, Malcolm Gladwell wrote that we're now making money off of the planet. And that was you know, a sea change when viewed from you know, geologic time to 200 years or 2,000 years from today. Um, that change is accelerating every day. Uh, you can't do an ATM transaction without the information um, being sent over space and verified at a bank. I um, mean, there are 50 more examples like that. Uh, so though I don't pretend uh, to be a futurist and understand where we'll be a few years from now, just the anecdotal information of what's being, what's being created uh, that is being flown in space today makes people realize that it's gonna be far, far less expensive to access space in the future. And as the price comes down um, and the value of the data gathered goes up, there'll be more and more and more things done in space. Not quite sure how we deal with all of the space debris, which will be the fallout um, from what I'm describing, uh, because these things are not going to be in geo orbits for the most part, uh, which means they're somewhere else. But that's a separate issue and someone else has to solve that. A spot was an idea uh, that we came up with as a small group in Global Star looking at the technology which at that time we called Simplex. And that technology was fundamentally one-way technology but it was very durable and flexible. So we said, geez, it seems to us that if we could create this as an inexpensive consumer device, we'd be in a situation where um, it, it could reach a mass market and could be a very, very simple product and save lives. So the emphasis originally was on the SOS button. And how do you get that in the hands of people that are gonna be outside of cellular? It evolved into three or four generations of Spot, devices additionally called Trace and Connect and several others, um, which added radically different functionality to it. And we've got a new device that'll be in the market shortly called Spot 4, which is, once again, a radical departure. But at its core, everything allows you to track where you are, to send messages that you're okay or you're not okay. And if you're in a serious bind, press an SOS button, and then we have a way of going out through our, our partner, Geos, uh, finding you within about 30 feet, almost anywhere you are on the planet, um, and, and, and rescuing you. And so what was originally um, a bit nerve-wracking for the search and rescue community because they assumed that people would use these devices indiscriminately and perhaps start to have false alarms or call for help in a way that would have compromised and put the lives of the rescuers um, in harm's way. They found out that, in fact, though events like that occur from time to time, um, you know exactly where the party is that's pressed the button within a couple of feet. So those guys now say that Spot takes the search out of search and rescue. And that's been a huge advantage. We've now um, had almost, well, 5,000 saves, uh, 1,000 of which were in the last 14 months. Uh, so there are hundreds of thousands of them out there. They're saving lives every day. Um, it, was a, it was a great device um, from a small skunk works inside, inside Global Star that we're 
obviously extremely proud of. Well, my company owns about two-thirds of Global Star, um, and we are in no mood to cash in our chips. Uh, and in the other businesses we've been involved in, we've been involved in them for decades, and so we have no present intention to do anything like that. Uh, Global Star is a complicated business, uh, and it has two major components now, the satellite component that we've talked about, um, and also Spectrum which was recently approved by the FCC for terrestrial use. So this operates as a separate uh, business line inside Global Star, and how we use that spectrum will be important to our next 20 years. Uh, so we have no intention of cashing in our chips uh, and, and look forward to the next period at Global Star. It means everything to the company. It means everything to our employees. It's, it's something that we think about every day. And, and let me capture it this way for you, because this really does, uh, I think, get it perfectly. There are some five or 10,000 people today walking around on the planet because of Spot. Otherwise, those five or 10,000 people would be pushing up daisies somewhere. Um, and that means a lot to us as a company. And there's stuff uh, up on the walls which are letters from people. There are videos uh, that we have of people that have talked about their experience, um, people that never thought they would have to use it and they're alive today because they, they, they took it. Um, it it's just extraordinary. Um, and those testimonials are up. The numbers of saves are constantly flashed um, on screens around Global Star so people recognize it. Uh, it just mean, it means everything to us. It's obviously a, tr a tremendous honor um, to, to even be considered for something like this, but if the subject is the lives we save, um, then, then, then SPOT is really the answer for that. And though I'm inducted into the Hall of Fame for my part in that, um, I'm a little part of it. Uh, and, and everybody that had to figure it out technically uh, it, are those that are the unsung tonight, but um, I'm, I'm very, very happy to be a part of that team.